Imagine being a sales rep with no sales experience trying to land your first job. Imagine how difficult that would be. Well, I know exactly that situation because I've been there and I know you've been there. You look at all of the job wantings and they said must come with X amount of years of experience. How? I'm brand new. Well, in today's episode, we're going to tell you how you can get that job even if you have no experience. Yeah, straight up. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist Podcast. I'm your host, Donald Kelly, the Sales Evangelist, and I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And on this episode, we have a great friend of ours. His name's Mitchell Earl, and Mitchell is going to talk to us about how you as a sales rep can land a job, even if you have no experience in that job, even if you have no experience in that industry, but how you can stand out from the crowd and get your resume or get yourself to the top. I won't take away his thunder. He's going to tell you a little bit more about him and his company and some of the cool things that they're doing. So let's go ahead and dive into the episode. Welcome to the show, Mitchell. Yeah, man. I'm pumped to talk about uh, talk about sales today. Excited to be on here with you. Oh, man. I'm super excited to have you because there's nothing more that I love than to talk about sales and to talk about sales about new sale, new sellers specifically, because I've been there and I know the struggle and many of our audience members are trying to battle through. And most of them right now are the class of 2020 and they're trying to find, find their first sales gig. But you know what? All those jobs are telling you, you need to come with some experience. So I want to get the secret. How can we skip the line? How can we get this job without having experience? But before we dive into that, hold on to it. Tell us a little bit more about you, man, and what you do. Yeah. All right. I, I, I was, I was getting geared up to like start yeah. diving into sales, man, but uh, it, it probably is proper context to give a little bit more information about myself. So I, I was the kid that had everything figured out when I was going to go to college. I wanted to go to medical school and I got into college you know, about a year in where everything completely changed for me. I got involved with a very early stage startup uh, that just said, you know, my sophomore year of college and it, and it took off. It was, you know, just a small team at, at first, but over the course of three years, by the time I graduated, this company had grown to thousands of people. And I got to wear, you know, pretty much every hat and yeah. just, uh, you know, my, my small little role there. And it wasn't a paid thing or anything. It was very much like real world learning because I was a student. And I think in many ways that was even more valuable. So I had to learn how to do so many different things. And as I got out in the real world, still wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I worked uh, a tons of different jobs while I was while I was trying to figure out you know what's my thing. A lot of those were in sales, and you know ultimately you know I was about two weeks from going back to law school because you know when you don't know what you do in this world, everybody says go to more school, go do more. There school. you go. <laughs> and and uh, I was I was scared because I didn't have a plan, and that's when you know that's when I met the founder of a company called Praxis, which is a a boot camp. Um, that results in full-time job at a startup. Through that program, I got placed with you know a very early stage company. I got to apprentice the CEO of a fast-growing company, and ultimately became his right hand. And I, I worked there for you know a handful of years. Um, left. Have done a bunch of different things since then. But um, now, uh, you know, as as virtue of my own story, um, I, I just find so much joy working with young people, which is what I get to do as COO at Praxis, where we help people make that first step into the real world, whether they're fresh out of high school, fresh out of college, or they're dropping out of college, we help them land their first career jobs. And many of those happen to be in sales, which is just so fun. Such a fun. Hey, look at that. Look at that. All ties back. All roads lead to sales. <laughs> <laughs> so here's it. I just graduated from University of Miami. Uh, well, let's, let's, let's go. Yeah, University of Miami. Graduated from University of Miami, and I thought I knew what I wanted to get into, but I love the idea of professional selling, and I want to get involved in that arena because I feel it's going to help me when I go for my MBA at Harvard. Yep. So, <laughs> I have no experience. Every job that I'm looking at is asking for two to three years experience. What is the, what's the first thing I should do? Is that go back to school now? <laughs> <laughs> well, well I, I would say if you already know what you want to do, that's the last place you should go unless it's a, a path that is legally requires a, a, an additional degree. Fortunately, sales is, is one of the entry points where people care less about your credentials and they care more about your, your ability to learn quickly, mm -hmm. your ability to show up, you know, your ability to be coached, your ability to, to sell and handle rejection, all these other things. So 
I'd say first, you know, if you're that grad, pat yourself on the back for already having something chosen, like a, a, yeah. a next step figured out, because that's a hard thing. And I think that you've, you know, if that you've had that you have sales in mind is like awesome for you because you've already made it past the, you know, the co common misconception about, you know, sales, which I think a lot of, of young people have is sales is a sleazy thing. It's not, you know, so you're that person, you already have it figured out. Kudos to you. How do you go get hired? I think, um, you know, the best way to do this is, is to show somebody that you can be valuable. And the thing about being a salesperson is so much of the job is figuring out how to get attention from somebody else. Hmm. And I, I, when, when, and when you're a salesperson, thinking about the traditional job hunt, like applying the same way as everybody else is the same thing as sending the same cold email as everybody else. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do the exact same thing everybody else is doing. How can you stand out? How can you differentiate yourself? How can you demand attention from somebody else? And then the second thing is once you have somebody's attention, you have to hold it. You have to prove that it's valuable. So with, you know, the hundreds of people that I've worked with to, to help land jobs across all different types of roles, sales is one of my favorite, is, is prove you're valuable. You know, prove mm -hmm. your value. One of, one of the ways that I like to do that is by, by putting together a pitch deck, a personal pitch deck, and also a project. For sales, <laughs> there are a lot of different projects. Um, some of my favorite ones is like go start on the, the company's website that you're interested in. Go, you know, go figure out who their buyers are. Go figure out, you know, uh, how, how to find a list of those buyers. Build a prospect list and like document your methodology. Figure out, you know, show that you can actually figure out who the buyer is and build a list. Build a free list of 50 prospects. Go send that to the, the VP of sales. Say, hey, I can, I can do this over and over and over again for your business. Give me a shot or something like yeah. that. Or, you know, put together a pitch deck that's a, you know, short 10, 10 slides about who you are why you love their company, why you love the, the, the problem their product solves, you know, why you love working with their customers, whatever it is, like, and then pitch, pitch how you can solve that problem for them, whether it's helping get in front of customers, whatever it is. You, the pitch deck doesn't have to be anything in, per, in particular, except it does have to showcase how you could be valuable. It shouldn't be, you know, a bunch of bullet points like a resume. It should show that you actually have thought, you know, you've gone through the process of learning about their company, who their customers are, it, it, it should show some cognitive effort versus just, you know, dear sir or madam, I'm writing because I'd like a job. <laughs> like the average cover letter and resumes just suck. But when you go to those links and you do something different and act like a salesperson, go do some cold outreach, go find who the hiring manager is, find them on LinkedIn, prospect them the same way that a salesperson might prospect somebody. And, you know, your, your chances now of getting attention are so much better than just throwing your, your, you know, your bland white, you know, white page, one space, you know, one page, you know, black, black times new Roman size 12 font in the same pile with everybody else's stuff that looks exactly the same, like stand out yeah. do yourself a favor. So that's and the gist of it. <laughs> and AI pretty much is going to start filtering through and look for, you know, if you, the keywords. So if you don't have that experience on there, you're screwed. So I mean, at this point, you have a high probability of losing based on just a resume alone, but you have a better ch a shot at grabbing attention if you did what the job requirement to do, which is to get the attention and to pretty much, you know, offer a value. I love the idea of that list. Why, why didn't I do that earlier? I mean, that would have been great. You know, <laughs> come with a, a 50 ideal customer and, and do some basically profile them beforehand. That would have been fantastic. That's why we have podcasts like this now. These, That's kids, right. That's these kids have so much more than we did back in the days, Mitchell. What's up with that, man? Oh Come my on. gosh. I know. I know. <laughs> I wish, I wish I would have known so many things that I've learned on podcasts, man. I stubbed my toe <laughs> so many times. So <laughs> yeah. And, and um, yeah, this, we're going to call it podcast MBA or <laughs> for real. Uh, it's a free education. For real. So now we, we do all of this stuff. Uh, now we, you know, is there anything else that we can take advantage of, especially as a sales rep to be able to put ourselves, um, to give ourselves that opportunity? Or let's say now I, I got the attention of Joe Schmo and I'm sitting down in front of him and he does ask that inevitable question. Donald, I saw you send this stuff in, but we do want somebody with two, three years of experience. What do I say at that point? Yeah. So I think that you, you, you need to be prepared for that question, but you need to be prepared yeah. for that before you're in the interview. You need to be sure. prepared with the mindset that effort, when you don't have experience, effort is your best friend. So make effort. So 
you can prepare yourself for that question by going the extra mile and doing projects like this. Like it, you've already made a really strong first impression. I would lean into that same first impression. Like, hey, I don't have experience, but you know what I do have. I have the willingness to, to show up earlier than everybody else, the mm. willingness to, to stay later, the willingness and obsession to perfect my craft, to get as, you know, to get good at sales, to learn from people. Like I, I'm somebody who could be mentored. Like, yes, you do have to rely on some soft skills. Like you have to persuade somebody to take a bet on you because the, you don't have an experience. You know what you can also say? It's like, yeah, I don't have experience and I don't know everything, but nobody started with experience. You know what I don't have? I don't have bad habits that, that you know, most sales reps pick up working for another company that did it a different way. I'm also willing to start at the ground floor and I'm comfortable being told no. Like, what, it, it, hopefully that's true. You know, if you're going into sales, <laughs> it's starting at the bottom. But like, give me a shot. Give me a shot. Um, you know, if, if you want me to prove to you that my experience isn't going to be an issue, give me a shot. Let me do a project for you. Let me go build, you know, let me go prospect for you. Let me go do a week long free trial for you. Like what would it take to convince you that I'm worth taking a bet on and, and just change the dynamic. You know, I think that the common thing that most people run into in their lives is that, you know, there, there are all these rules, but they're not really rules. Everything is up for negotiation if you'll ask, but if you never ask, and you just assume that, that the rules on the job postings exclude you, like you're never going to get that job. So just yeah. forget about those and get, you know, give yourself the benefit of the doubt and, and ask, figure out, you know, figure out a way to create that opportunity for yourself. So, you know, putting, putting the, uh, you know, putting the, the, the burden of proof back on yourself like that, I think is a great way. Yeah. No, and I, and I, I love that. I think it, it also, it embraces, it embraces your, like your authentic human self, because yeah, as, a, yeah. as a human being, you're going to be like, yeah, you know, I mean, nobody wants somebody that's going to lie because the sales manager is already going to know or the hiring manager is going to know, well, what this person is capable of based on your you know, resume said. But if you were to say, you know, I don't, you know, I, I do have experience and you try to fib it, you know, massage it in a certain way, just be honest. I do not have yeah. experience, but I have this and this can yeah. make up for that. And I remember when I was in college, one of the things they told us was when people, I always thought is uh, in growing up uh, that you don't want to point out negative things. So they you know, they asked that question, the inevitable question, tell us something that one of your weaknesses and you're automatically thinking like, you know, if I tell my weakness, that means they're not going to like me because I, I have a weakness. But in actuality, they, they have weaknesses themselves. But as someone who is willing to work at their weaknesses, that that's a differentiator. And then obviously showing your, your ingenu ingenuity, you're in, you're, you're smart. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like, I like you, that word too. <laughs> that, you know, you're, you're in, you came to the table with some, with a project, you came yeah. with a deck, you came with, um, you know, with, with doing something else. And I think those, those things show that, yeah, you're, you're a genius and, and, yeah. and you can probably do a lot more. Yeah. I think, I think this is another common thing. I, I see this all the time with people earlier in their career too, is like you just said, I don't want to point out my weakness. And if somebody does shine the light on my weakness, I want to deflect it by, by coming off more experienced or smarter than I actually am. And I mm -hmm. think that's very harmful. What I suggest is if you've got a weakness, attack it before they even ask, yes. address the, it, address the elephant in the room. You know, I always like to, I think one of my favorite ways is like, you know, uh, eight mile, the last, the last rap battle in eight mile, uh, where, you know, rabbit gets up and he, he's just like, he lists off everything anybody could possibly say. I mean, he handles all the objections before anybody has anything to say. Like <laughs> when, you, when, when, when you handle objections that way as a salesperson or marketing professional, that that helps customers, you know, that, that helps trust, you know, them trust you more, but the same thing works in your career. And as a young person without a ton of experience or, you know, to fall back on or things to point on and say, Hey, I did it already. You know, that, that shows so much self-awareness and it shows that you're already kind of thinking, you know, thinking through how that person perceives you. And that makes it way easier to, to get, you know, you control the narrative in that situation. So that's what I love about doing that too. Oh man. Yeah. And it, it just, it really deflates the other person's whole, whole argument. Right. I, yeah. And I always tell people this too. Like if you're, when you're being uh, in a political arena, sometimes pol politicians want to look like they have no problems. Like, you know, come out and say the problem. <laughs> if you did yeah. something bad, say, did I have an extramarital affair? I did. 
but this is what I did to fix that. Did I, you know, did I use uh, whatever uh, steroids? I did, but then I did this. And he's like, okay, well, uh, uh, but he used steroids. Yeah, he already told us he used steroids. <laughs> he admitted to yeah. it and he fixed it. <laughs> Take this thing out of it before they do. But that's Absolutely. great, man. You got to get ahead of it. <laughs> you got to. So um, let's, any other tips or any other strategy or any other advice you would give us when it comes towards us being a little bit, um, being more prepared without experience? Anything else that we might not have hit on yet? Yeah. So I think, you know, this, this is, is like common sales people getting started too. Mm -hmm. Is like, a, there's a function of just getting the reps in. Like you don't have to, to get a job offer on your, the first time you run this play. You sure. can, you know, some of these same tactics you can use over and over and over again at different companies. And so I think approaching it with the mindset that, you know, you're learning, you're getting at bats and those at bats are going to be valuable over time. One of the things that I've seen people who've, who've done this a number of times, you know, this type of approach, maybe not, maybe they use different projects or whatever is over time. You do this 10 times, like you've built up a pretty solid portfolio of sales projects that if I'm a VP of sales or somebody hiring sales reps, like if you show me, hey, I did these 10 things, I built 10 prospecting lists for 10 different companies, or I did these 10 different sales projects, like don't, don't approach your job hunt as a, a series of isolated opportunities. Mm. Like use them all to, to build more leverage for yourself. Like you're building your, this digital footprint, this, this paper trail. Um, you know, be ruthless about asking for referrals. Hey, if, if you didn't want to hire me because I don't have experience, do you know any other, you know, like be a good salesperson. The same behaviors that, that lead to success in sales are going to, to allow you to succeed on, you know, on the job hunt as well. That you are a freaking genius, bro. Like that's so smart. Like I've, you're right. Cause I, I think sometimes the only thing that we take typically between both of our jobs are usually those resumes and that cheap suit that we have, right? <laughs> That's the only thing we take. But why not take literally that portfolio that you're building up? Because if I apply to 10 different organizations and I use, you know, I create a four or five different of these projects, then now by the time I go to pro company number seven, I have something great. And I, I also love the fact that you're saying that we, you know, the, the whole Chinese adage, you know, you fall seven times, you get up eight because even if you miss out on the job for those, you know, they really don't want to get you because of your experience. There's someone out there that's going to hire you. The opportunity just wasn't quite there yet. And if you're going to be in sales and you're going to get offended because somebody say they don't want you, then God bless you. I remember Ray, I'm not going to tell you his last name because you're going to go on LinkedIn and try to find him. But Ray, I went for the job interview. I drove freaking like 30 minute drive from West Palm Beach to Boca Raton and I was determined to get this job. I wanted to get it. One of my friends was working there and gave me a referral. Said, you know, he, here's the guy. It was copier sales. Um, and I went in and then Ray in the door, in the doorway of their showroom, he, he didn't give me the honor of uh, sitting down with him, a luxury, give him a, a bottle of water. He said, um, well, how much experience do you have? And then I told him, he's like, so what was the last thing, major accomplishment? And I couldn't tell him major accomplishment. I was like, uh, I landed my, started dating my childhood girlfriend or you know, some girl I had a big crush on. And dude was like, you know what? Yeah, you know, I'm, this is not going to work. You're not going to be effective. You're not, basically not going to be good for sales. I'm glad Ray told me that because then I don't know what path I would have went to, but I went to another path. And they were, when I sat down with the CEO that day, the second interview, this was like month, a couple of weeks later, he said, why should I hire you over the guy that has 10 plus years of software sales? I wanted to react and say, software has been around for that long? This was back in 2011. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this one, dude was selling floppy disk? <laughs> <No. laughs> but I, I said, I'm Donald freaking Kelly. And I did list off the accomplishments that I did in college. And I said, I know I can do this job. And he took a chance on me and the rest is history, entered B2B professional world in software and eventually led to where we are today. But Ray put a chip on my shoulder because I was like, I want to prove him wrong. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> a chip on your shoulder as a salesperson or just <clears throat> anybody early in your career. That's, that's such a powerful thing to have. <laughs> Dude got me mad, got me hulking up, man. <laughs> That's well, fantastic. Um, this was great, man. But if there's one major advice, one major tip you would give to someone listening to this episode, what's that one major piece of advice, Mitchell? I'd say uh, don't, you know, don't let the first no 
you know, don't run away after the first no. I, mm-hmm. I've seen so many people handle the objection, you know, going back to the sales things when you're on your job hunt, you know, take them to a couple of objections. That's what you're supposed to do when you're on, you know, actually in the job is like handle those yeah. objections. Some of the best opportunities and outcomes that I've seen, uh, you know, a story I, I love of a, of a, of a friend of mine is he got turned down, was, was applying for a sales manager position and yeah. they told him no. And he, he packaged up, like he went and got really nice framed quotes from Winston Churchill or something like that. He mailed them to the office, um, mailed them to the office the next day, like overnighted them. And he just had a, per, a personal note. He said, every other candidate would have given up. And then they didn't just hire him, but they hired him as the VP of sales, you know, for a different position than what he, what he applied for. And so oh it's, gosh. it's don't give up, handle those objections. And even if it does turn in uh, out to be ultimately no, like, move on, you know, keep, yeah. keep going. Don't let, you know, don't let no slow you down in your career. Every other candidate would have, um, would have given up. I like, love that, man. Yeah. Well, I might have to use that on a couple prospects, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Folks out there listening to this, they're like, Donald, this guy is cool, dude, man. I want to connect with them. How did it go about connecting with you? Yeah. Follow me on Twitter at Mitchell underscore Earl, or uh, shoot me an email, Mitchell at discoverpraxis.com. Always happy to chat. Awesome. Mitchell, thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show, man. Appreciate you. Yeah, man. It's been a blast. Thanks. That was our friend Mitchell Earl, and you can connect with Mitchell by going and connecting with his, getting his contact information down below. We have his Twitter handle, Mitchell underscore Earl, as well as their website, as well as some of the other ways you can connect with him via LinkedIn and so forth. All that's down below, or you can go back to our website, thesalesevangelist.com slash the word episode number 1297. Now, the other thing I want you guys to be aware of is to check out our friends Crumble. It is an easy to use CRM, and especially if you're new to an organization, don't have a CRM, especially if it's a small company. Company, don't try to reinvent the wheel and try to create an Excel doc. Use Crumble. Now, there's no U in the URL. It's just CRM. It's a play on words. BLE.com slash TSC. CRM, BLE, dot com slash TSC. Can't, can't beat that. It's You can start off for free, and when you fall in love with it and use it and you see how great it is, you can always upgrade later on. But I recommend it, and I want you to try it. I share stuff like this because I want you to succeed. I want you guys to find more of those ideal customers. I want you to know what to say when you actually speak with them. I want you to be able to close more deals. If you want to do that, stay here, subscribe, and click that bell so you can get notified when we produce other episodes. As always, man, thank you so much for being here, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Have a good one. Hey, thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video today. If you enjoyed the content, I ask you to go ahead and hit that like button, that thumbs up at the bottom right-hand corner. Also, to make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. This way, we'll keep you up to date with all the latest sales strategies, latest tools, and things that are going to help you to not only find more prospects, but to close more deals. Thanks so much.